Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In this first episode, we will begin our heart-pounding installment of our Project Zomboid series. Brace yourselves as today marks the commencement of a challenge that takes survival to the next level, which is the Survivalist Challenge. Picture a journey kind of like the legendary influencers that you may have seen like the Outdoor Boys, or the Stealth Camping Master, Steve Wallace. Welcome to Camping with Steve. We're gonna camp in a culvert tonight. But we're just not talking about surviving a few nights. We're gonna go into the very end, whether that be the end of our beloved character or the end of the zombie virus. But before we embark on this epic adventure, I would greatly appreciate it if you became a part of this ever-growing community by hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoy Project Zomboid content, you won't want to miss out on the incredible escapades that unfold here on this channel. So don't forget to leave a like or a dislike and share your thoughts in the comments below. So let's make this adventure truly unforgettable. Let's get into this adventure. Alright, so we begin with our occupation and traits. For our occupation, we chose Park Ranger since we'll be spending a majority of our time outdoors. Knowing how to trap and forge will become essential to our survival. The positive traits we start with will be lucky because we can all use a little luck in the apocalypse. And the other trait is hunting since it would be within our skill set as a park ranger to know how to hunt or trap. Our negative traits will be slow healer. This will make our survival even more difficult for a single cut could get infected making us sick and weak thus ending the series with our demise. The second trait is underweight. Because we spend a lot of time out in the woods, we rarely have time to eat. And the third and most taxing trait will be claustrophobic. Something about being surrounded by four walls and a roof feels very unnatural to us, so our anxiety skyrockets. This means that we will not be able to sleep indoors and it will greatly reduce our damage when in buildings, which again in return will increase the likelihood of dying. We start this story not at the beginning of the outbreak, but at the end of it, approximately 10 years after the outbreak. But you ask me, how do you not know that 10 years has passed and a zombie apocalypse has started? And to you, I say, asking too many questions can lead to your disappearance. Anywho, the first thing I begin to do is to collect the usual items like food, drink, and possible self-defense weapons. I gotta quickly search though because my anxiety is skyrocketing due to my claustrophobia. Once I gather as much food and drink as I can, I start to relocate into the wild, far from the ruins of civilization and into the future of my survival. I tried my best to stop at every other house. Doing this will give my anxiety a bit of time to cool down instead of being a constant nerf to my stats. After searching enough houses to give me a decent amount of supplies, I head towards the riverside and I follow it for quite some time. Doing this was a great idea, because although it was a long walk, it gave me some time to think about some possible survival strategies, like where the ideal place to set up would be, how I would get my food and water sources, and most importantly, how I would stay safe while going to sleep. Since I have claustrophobia, my character cannot sleep in buildings because I'll be too panicked. However, for some reason I can sleep in cars. But if I'm living out in the woods, how will I get a car? These are the kinds of thoughts that boiled in my brain as I walked the riverbank watching the sun slowly descend below the horizon. Eventually, I come across an interesting landmark. Before me stands a bridge, but not just any bridge. It's a testament to nature's relentless repossession. The rails of the railroad track that intertwine with the bridge are now covered with the lush embrace of moss weaving throughout the man-made structure. The narrow expanse of the bridge is also cluttered with the skeletal remains of abandoned and obliterated cars each one with a silent witness to the passage of time and the forces of decay. The air is thick with the quiet resilience of nature, as it defiantly asserts itself over the remnants of human engineering. As the day winds down, I decide to bring it to a close. Seeking shelter within an abandoned van, when the new day emerges, it finds me still sleeping in that van, an unintended consequence of my late awakening. It's a predicament I unwittingly thrust upon myself, for waking up so late robs me of the precious hours needed to scout and establish my next temporary camp before sunset. So I continue my search. Around five hours later, I stumble upon what looks like to be a small mom and pop diner. Like the last structure, it was covered with moss and vines. As I get closer, I could see that there are some undead ghouls loitering with, as always, ominous intent. So I dispatch each one until the air is still. 
The only audible thing is my own heartbeat. I find a few useful supplies before continuing on into the woods, killing as many zombies as I can. The last thing I want is to have a trail of zombies forming a conga line to my destination. Not further down the road is what I think used to be a deer camp, where hunters would gather every year in November to drink beer and shoot a deer. However, it looks like neither of that will be happening anytime soon. I slink my way throughout the layout of the building. I find some useful items like a machete and some books. Again, once I'm complete with my looting, I continue my search for the perfect camp. Now this wouldn't be a deer camp if it didn't have a shooting range. Hopefully I can find some better supplies there. Unfortunately, the only thing I did find were more zombies. Like, a lot more zombies. So many that I began to get fatigued due to the amount of swinging and killing that I was doing. Eventually though, I took care of the main line of zombies that pursued me. Now I just had to clear the rest of the stragglers nearby to make sure that I was safe while I slept. Once the area was secure, I went indoors and looked for better supplies. Again though, there were no game changing items, so I waited around until I was so tired that I had to sleep on the ground outside. On the third day I woke up without a single bite surprisingly, but that doesn't mean that I'll be safe next time. And of course it's raining, but luckily I was prepared. I donned my wet weather poncho and continued to walk through the forest, dispatching the few zombies I came across. With the sun setting, my desire to find a safe place to set up camp grew more and more. Until just before dusk, I stumbled upon an old hunting shack. Now this is Project Zomboid and ladders are unusable, but I'm just looking for a place that will shelter me from the pouring rain. And of course, I can't have anything nice and a zombie walks upon me. I kill him eventually, but there's no way I can take on another horde at this state. I'm just too tired and my energy is dwindling. So I stay close and look for proper supplies that will help me make a fire. But to do that, I need an axe to get proper firewood. So now I have to find a chip stone and a tree branch to make the axe. So I literally spend all night trying to find these supplies. Eventually though, my eyes can no longer stay open. I fall asleep and again, I wake up very late in the day with very little time to do some searching. But after only a few hours, I have what I need to make an axe and begin chopping the smallest tree nearby. Hearing the cracks and groans of the wood as it twists and falls onto the ground is music to my ears. Only a short time passes where I've crafted a fire pit that will soon warm my cold heart. But I'm gonna need more wood to keep me warm throughout the night. While cutting down another tree, my axe breaks. Looks like these crafted axes are extremely weak and I'll be making them constantly. However, my desire for a fire is unmatched and I go looking for what I need immediately. And that very night, I get what I worked oh so hard for. The warm, radiant heat from the fire, the relaxing crackles and pops of my precious heat source. Moments like these refuel my motivation to push through and become comfortable with being uncomfortable. For the rewards will always be grand. As I rummage through my pack, I notice my struggles are just beginning for my food source is becoming increasingly limited time to tackle this next chapter in our survivalist story. If you made it this far, I want to thank you so much for watching. Your presence means the world. If you enjoyed the content thus far, please consider becoming a valued member of this ever-growing community by hitting the subscribe button if you already haven't. Your support fuels the journeys we're on together. And now a simple request. Express your emotions with a like or a dislike and dive into the conversation by sharing your thoughts in the comments below. For those inclined to provide additional support, check out the link in the description where you can metaphorically buy me a coffee. Your generosity is deeply appreciated. Once again, thank you for investing your time with me today. Until our next adventure, take care and I will see you in the next one.